Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and you're watching number 13 of animation which was Fight. So here's my work. It was uh, pretty good, uh, it was good fun but it didn't turn out amazingly well, uh, still very much in its early phases. You're really doing double the work when you've got two characters in there, there's uh, no two ways about it really. Uh, so it was a tough one this week and it took me a long time. So there's a fair bit of time lapse here really. Um, but I'll talk you through the process and there's quite a few of uh, your pieces so maybe a few people are a little bit behind uh, so we've got uh, more work than normal to show at the end so slightly longer one uh, than normal but this is our second to last one so um, hopefully when you have a go at fight um, yourselves which is tomorrow's category uh, you might want to do two characters it's certainly good fun uh, but uh, if you're strapped for time I would suggest just doing one maybe they're doing some sort of uh, carter or something um, or was it uh, Kung Fu forms as they called I think something like that anyway. uh, so uh, be a bit careful with this one it can take a long time but it, we are on the second to last one so you might want to be experimenting and having a bit of fun uh, and uh, that's pretty much what I did um, because I'm on half term it's uh, half term in the UK uh, and so no teaching this week so I was a little bit tired because I've been a bit ill but I'm better now thank you very much for asking <laughs> so um, I was a little bit sluggish shall we say uh, but it was quite nice just to potter away uh, doing some animation, not being too stressed about it. What I did differently this time was I didn't use any reference at all. I thought I'm just going to have a go without reference and obviously I stood up and moved around thinking how is this going to work and uh, I think it shows that I haven't used any reference because it's not that great. Um, but I wanted to be a bit more free in a sense. Uh, that's kind of the fun of animation, it's kind of the fun of sculpting sometimes when you're sort of pulling things out and making these weird monsters out of nothing. And uh, it's kind of the same with animation, but we're so used to seeing this sort of movement um, and understanding movement in terms of the physics. And we see it and we instantly recognise when things don't work. So even like on brilliant, amazing films, you see instantly when the animation looks odd um, and that's the bit the animator has tried their best to recreate physics um, in the sort of natural world but it's really 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 hard uh, so you can see that I haven't been able to do it very well at all uh, so uh, but you can sort of appreciate that there are times where you can't just use a reference you can't just uh, use physics uh, you have to sort of interpret so if someone's jumping three meters high for example that's humanly impossible so you have to sort of make up some sort of physics there. Very, computer games are better at it I think uh, because they have like things like double jumps uh, that don't make any sense in the world they sort of jump and then jump again you think well where's that come from but um, they managed to animate it in such a way that it seems to be natural somehow whereas uh, film weirdly I feel like has a further way to go maybe it's because it's a computer game we just accept these things whereas uh, films were looking for the reality uh, anyway yeah, that's a slight aside but let's talk you through the animation now so you can see me uh, blocking away, uh, blocking out uh, here, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, and it's it's funny when you haven't really got an idea of how these characters are going to move, and you just go for it. Uh, blocking out seems weird because you think, well, what is going to be my keyframes? Uh, where are they? And so, uh, I suppose after. Um, well, I call it a month's experience, but obviously it's been every second day. It's helped me to sort of figure out what are going to be keyframes and what aren't. And I suppose that's um, all part of the learning process. Um, and I feel like I've got just about enough there to come up with uh, an okay workflow for uh, being very free like this, if that makes sense. And now I did watch another person, uh, it's one of the people I've talked about before, I think they're WMA they call themselves or something, but I can't remember. Uh, but they um, actually talked about animating a fight scene, so if you look it up on YouTube, animating a fight scene, it will come up. Uh, he does some excellent work, and um, he said do one character then the next. And uh, when I was thinking about it, I was thinking, well I don't want to do that because I want them to move together somehow. But actually... Uh, it's really, uh, I can, as I was moving the one character, I thought, yeah, I can't do the second character yet because I haven't got the timings right for the first. So you have to know what your timings are to sort of link them up. And the timings have to kind of be right for them to move in sequence. So getting one right first, if you are doing two characters, is really, really vital, in my opinion, anyway. I'm just going to zoom out a bit of my timeline so I know exactly uh, where I am. Nope, I can't see where I am anyway, so it doesn't matter so much. Ah, there it is. Right. 
Okay, right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I uh, just like to know where I am in my video so I can um, uh, think of what else to say and what to include. Anyway, uh, so back to this. Uh, so blocking out, you can see, uh, and it's taking a long time. Uh, so I've got one character set, uh, and then he's moved to a certain position. And then I thought I'd move to the other character now. Now I know that it, that first stage where the character's supposed to be. So I moved to the second character, and then back to the first. Um, so I started doing them slightly together at this point, uh, because I wanted what the impact to suddenly come out. And I couldn't really do that very easily without having the other character animated. So it's, it was a bit fluid, but I started on one, did a lot of work on one, and got the timing for one, and then um, moved to the other, and then matched the timings up. And also, the timing wasn't perfect. You, you do time, tend to sort of adapt the timing. I do anyway, because I'm still, like I say, a bit inexperienced. So uh, the timing wasn't spot on all the time. Uh, well, it still isn't, to be fair. But uh, if you move, your keyframes five frames one way for one character let's say you think oh that jumps a bit slow so I need to move all those end keyframes up uh, then you obviously have to go to the other character and find that point and move their keyframes up as well uh, so uh, once it gets to that point it starts getting quite tricky so you can see the difficulty you might have if you're animating two characters together yeah uh, hopefully these uh, hints are going to be helpful for you um, the bits that are missing really um, the movement isn't very fluid. It still looks pretty much in its blocking out phase. I did a bit of sort of what it follow through uh, with the, the hands and stuff right at the end. And I thought I'm going to have to just leave it there because this must have been, I don't know, eight hours or something. It was very on and off, of course, uh, because I was sort of just pottering, uh, which is a nice thing to do, isn't it? Where you just sort of, I'll, I'll leave it now, I'll go have a break, do something, and then come back to it and then potter away. And uh, But there were times I um, spent about 40 minutes and then went away. Uh, I think that's really healthy to do it like that personally, if you are able to. Sometimes you just have to work really hard and solidly on a project. Uh, and But I find I don't do my best work when I'm like that, because you just get tired mentally and you sort of miss things. And that's when you make mistakes, like forgetting to save your work and making a mistake and uh, having to undo, and oh, it's, uh, it gets painful then. Uh, take regular breaks and do exercise in between. I always say that, but uh, I think that's a good thing. Uh, don't uh, drink energy drinks uh, to keep yourself awake and things like that. That's just the worst case scenario. Uh, anyway, uh, that's, that's probably another topic for another time, but it's my uh, big hatred is energy drinks. I see lots of students with them and it's, it's not good for you. Anyway, <laughs> back to the... Um, animation uh, the kick was really tough because um, you've got to think uh, because a jump is fine the jump sort of follows a curve doesn't it but a kick when there's impact in the middle of the jump there's a sort of a point where your um, gravity is interrupted that curve is interrupted by the weight of the kick the weight of the object you're kicking uh, in this case uh, this guy who's been kicked and um, that was really tough to make look right and it doesn't uh, the kick looks very floaty. Uh, floaty, I'm not sure. It just, um, there's no impact in it, there's no weight. Um, and that was frustrating. I think it might be a bit too quick in the end as well. It was quite strange because I was trying to sort of figure out, uh, like there's this John Claude Van Damme where he sort of does this split kick and I wanted her to do that and she does that, but the frames are so fast you don't see it. So maybe I should have put that in slow motion actually. Just thinking back, uh, why not have that in slow motion? Then I've got more key keyframes to play with and it might have been, yeah. That's what I should have done. Perhaps use slow motion in yours. Because obviously you're not slowing the footage down, you are animating slower. Uh, so, although that, that might be interesting in a sense, an interesting test for you to do, uh, because uh, suddenly you're going half the speed, so how are you gonna marry those up and keep the speed consistent? So that's an interesting one. <laughs> anyway, so uh, perhaps that's how I could have solved that issue, but everything seemed to move really qu quick and fast, but um, I think actually when you think of these sort of kicks, uh, they do happen really quickly and maybe our minds just sort of interpret what's happening uh, and it's only when they're slowed down you sort of get to grips with, like in most martial arts movies these things are sort of slowed down at particular points so I probably should have done that I think that would be beneficial to you yes so uh, you can see here can, uh, on my curve just there I've uh, instead of the bezier handle I've changed it to a free to try and make it a bit more punchy that uh, where the kick is so there's that's the X channel so it's, she's moving across this way and I I've created a sort of um, a, a jolt in there to try to make the kick look more weighty 
it was a lot of fiddling and it didn't quite work. I don't think anyway, I don't think it quite got there. I mean, it's, it's close-ish, but close is never good enough, is it? Because uh, you, our eyes are just so adept at uh, seeing these things not working. So uh, yeah, close is not good enough <laughs> by any means. Uh, but I think uh, at this point, I was uh, starting to get a bit worried about how much time I'd spent. I'm just going to go across my timeline, see whereabouts I am. Yeah, I was certainly getting uh, a bit worried because I must have spent five hours or so. But I wasn't, you know, sometimes you just don't feel too stressed. And you think, okay, this is all right. I've got loads of projects on I should be doing. Uh, but this was a nice thing to do. I think uh, also some of them are animation projects. So uh, <laughs> this is helping me. So I'm always thinking I, it, the learning process, never get stressed by it. Um, because when you're stressed you don't learn so well yeah, so always try and stay relaxed uh, and you'll you'll learn better supposedly uh, so they say <laughs> when I do all these teaching courses and things like that that us teachers have to go on uh, they say these things about learning uh, so <laughs> lots uh, lots to uh, know and understand about learning in itself uh, and as, I'm assuming that's why everybody's watching this channel is to sort of learn more and practice and uh, so hopefully you can glean something from these things as well. Uh, I'm, I'm babbling now, I'll get back to the animation. See I'm still working on this kick. Uh, motion paths though, they were really handy uh, and I used them a lot in this one this time uh, because there was a smoothness that it didn't have. Uh, so uh, using the motion paths tool which is in the sort of um, armature uh, tools on the right hand side. Uh, that was very very handy uh, so you can see and and your body should move in curves so um, let's say my hands and they they move up and out they tend to sort of move round like this rather than go like that there's a there's a sort of circular motion to things uh, and keep those curves trust your curves I think is the key so in the graph editor your curves should look smooth for unless you want some sort of jolt uh, and the same with your motion paths if there's something that's wobbling around the place um, then there, there might be an issue with your curves. I mean, some things sometimes, like uh, if you've got IK on the hands and they're swinging in a walk, they will sort of move in a, they'll still go follow a curve, but it'll be an unusual curve. It won't be sort of naturally like this, a pendulum, because our bodies are moving up and down as well. Uh, so it's not always as straightforward as you might think, but there should be a smoothness to your curves. And you can see that I'm tidying up the curves. And I think actually on Blender today, uh, which was yesterday, was it, that I was watching it? Something like that. Uh, they were talking about, uh, he was answering a question and it was something about um, uh, will they have uh, adjustable motion paths, I think it was. So these motion paths, you'll be able to go in and move the motion path. Rather than having to go in and move the keyframes, you can actually just adjust your motion path. Now that would be great. And apparently they were saying something like, uh, the question said Maya has them already. So that's maybe why people like using Maya for um, animation uh, rather than Blender. Sorry guys, uh, but apparently Maya has uh, more features for animation, uh, so I'm told. Um, but but they're thinking of adding it, so I think uh, by the looks of it, or by the sounds of it, maybe 2.81 will have some animation tools, perhaps, I don't know. I did find the motion paths a bit awkward because if you choose a bone and you ask for the motion paths, for, ask, for, <laughs> ask politely, click a button for them, uh, you get the motion paths, but then you click on a different bone, the old motion paths for the old bone are still there, and then you want to clear them, you can't, you have to actually select that original bone to clear them, which is a bit irritating. Um, I probably should put in some sort of report about that, can we have that change, um, where you can just clear all paths, uh, have a button there. Or maybe there is, someone tell me if there is, if you're still watching. I mean, this is quite a long one today, isn't it? So. Um, I think the average view time for these videos is quite low, <laughs> unfortunately, and uh, and the the view count is very low as well. So uh, in a way, uh, animation uh, hasn't been very successful for my YouTube channel, uh, but it's been very successful for my learning, and that that is why I'm here. And if you want to follow along my journey, then you can join in and watch my videos, but you don't have to. I think that's what I love about, I'm going to go off on one, but I love about YouTube because I teach all the time, obviously, uh, in terms of uh, I've been teaching now for uh, well over 10 years, I don't know how many years, uh, but uh, in teaching you've got students there who don't want to be there and that's the worst thing for a teacher because you have to force them through. I'm really going off on one, but anyway, it's kind of interesting. I think. Uh, but with YouTube, you leave. If you're not interested, you leave and that means I'm not doing a good job if I haven't held your attention or you're just not interested, which is fine. Um, but if a 
uh, video hasn't done well, I can consider, well, either not many people are interested or I haven't done well as a teacher, whereas it's much harder to assess someone's teaching in the teaching trade. So I like YouTube for instant uh, communication about how well I'm doing as a teacher. Oh, anyway, that was it. <laughs> Back to your animation. There's some wonderful stuff. Um, it was, uh, we're back to superhero now, but it should be excited, or interested, sorry, interested was the last one. So there's Kevin's interested skeleton uh, looking out. Uh, but there are a few um, earlier ones as well, uh, which I just thought was fantastic, so I'm trying to include them as well. I can't include everything because uh, it would be too long, but I'm trying to keep up to date, and if you're perhaps just joined us, then I'll try and include something of yours. And there's some fantastic work. It's brilliant. It's, it is much better if you can go to Discord and upload it there. I mean, there's only one more to go, two more to go now. Uh, so uh, it would be better in that sense. But uh, because otherwise I have to do a screen capture of Facebook, which isn't the best. This one's quite epic, this uh, cat being interested in a butterfly. A nice idea. Um, it, I like the way people adapt the themes. Um, I think that would have been better rendered in Eevee with some shadows, if, uh, unless you just had shadows turned off in Eevee. Uh, Mohammed uh, Abdullah, who was saying, I think I'm getting better. You are getting better. This is good work. Uh, I like the tapping of the screen, the camera movement, good thinking. This one has some sound to it, doesn't it? So. Does it have some sound? Yes, yeah. So I'll quieten down a bit so you can hear the sound, hopefully. I think it's quite a funny idea. So there's a, there's, I think there's a scream at the end there, isn't there? And there's another another one of sound here, uh, the spider. A bit, a bit freaky, this one. Didn't like that one. It scared me. I'm a bit of an arachnophobe, to be honest. <laughs> and there's uh, some good stuff. Uh, the the um, coffee shop theme again there. Uh, I like that. A uh, bit of a dance. Hopefully I didn't put that one in twice. Here, sometimes if they've, if I've not seen it on Discord and it's on Facebook, I have to go in and capture them both. And sometimes I get uh, two, so I usually I make, I realise and I've um, seen it. This one's a funny one from Mark. This I quite like this whole scene. Uh, Mark, there's some good stuff out there. Well done, Mark Herman. Was it Harman? I like it. Toupee in a can. Hopefully I won't need that anytime soon, but I can feel my hair thinning at the top there, so uh, I may need it. <laughs> this, oh, this one's good. Look at the, uh, the smoothness of that animation. is lovely. I mean, it's, it's short, but really good. And this one as well, uh, Sean Fernie. Uh, oh, love it, love it. Another smooth one there uh, with some sort. This one was just added in, uh, not really to do with animation, but I thought it was quite cool. So I thought, yep, well done, add it in. Nice work. Uh, the dog, that's a good, interesting one, isn't it? Waking up to the smell like that. Oh, this one has some sound. She is your sister, and I am her aunt. What does that Devilishly mean? Dutch, that's the one. Nice work, yep, this is brilliant. I like this, the, the circus with the lighting, that was very clever. Oh, this one, this one's very good. Uh, Andrew doing some great stuff. Look at that. I, I like that, and I love this one as well, from Julius Lee. Uh, the, the shrinking, you can't, probably can't tell very easily because my frame rate's probably a little bit lower on my recording, but uh, the shrink also has a bit of stretch to it as well. <laughs> this looks brilliant, really great stuff. And this one with the uh, changing costume. Nice idea. I like that. Anyway, so there we have it. Uh, bits of your work. Well done. Uh, keep going. Uh, powering on through. I suppose for the last one, I'll have to do sort of uh, the sports one and then another one after it, after it uh, to uh, sort of review and talk about the winner, I suppose, of the prizes. I don't know whether people are still uploading to Sketchfab. It's a very um, awkward platform for us and it didn't really work. So I appreciate it if you're not. Um, and uh, it may be that we just don't go down the route of the Sketchfab prizes, but the, the CG Cookie one is fantastic of three months. So uh, we'll watch this space, but um, I will, I'll chat to the uh, Sketchfab people and see what they say as well. Um, and whether we can't uh, have just a few on uh, Sketchfab would be great. Anyway, uh, I think that's it from me. Uh, so don't overdo it on the fight scene. Uh, remember you've got one more after as well with sports, so uh, keep, try and keep it simple and keep learning. Happy animating and I will see you next time.